for creators. Yes, it is. He is the co-founder of a company called Carat. And he is going to talk about how to invest and spend money as a creator. He raised $100 million from the co-founders of Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay? So I want you to help me introduce him. I'm going to say, when I say Eric, you say we. Eric. We. Eric. We. Eric. walked up to you off the street and said, hey, I'd like to give you a few hundred thousand dollars, and all you have to do is sign here and give me your bank account details, would you do it? Alright, you seem like a pretty smart group of people, but sometimes you might actually be stupid. Because in 2020, the government actually tried to do exactly this. During the pandemic, the government set up a program called the Paycheck Protection Program, PPP. And they said if you are a business, you can receive tens, potentially hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of dollars for COVID relief that you did not have to pay back. And I went around to all of my creator friends and said, hey, I'd like to help you get this money. And they all made the exact same decision you did. They said, no, because this is clearly a scam and I'm too smart for you. And unfortunately, it was entirely legitimate and you would have missed out on probably a once in a lifetime free lunch from Uncle Sam. You're all creators. Each one of you creative, wanting to bring something into the world. So it makes sense that you and many of the other people I went to just didn't really care. Because to survive as a creative in this capitalist society is so hard that arguably every iota of energy that you have should not be spent on finances. It should be spent on your content, your community, and monetizing. And yet, there is a bare minimum that you should know. Not too much, because again, every hour you're going through your taxes, you could have been spending on a YouTube video, but enough that you don't make stupid mistakes. Even Michelangelo was a creator. He debunked brand deals. The Sistine Chapel was a brand deal. The Pope went to him and said, hey, so I'd really like you to paint this thing. And he said, no, 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 this isn't true to my art. I'm a sculptor, not a painter. And the Pope said, yeah, well, I'm paying for everything, so you better fucking do it. And he said, okay, fine, and now we have the Sistine Chapel. The point of making is there's a balance, and my goal today is to walk you through three high-level things. Number one, why even track your revenue and expenses? Number two, taxes. Number three, credit, to give you just enough so you don't make stupid decisions, but not too much that you end up thinking about this when I want you to be making videos like Messiah on YouTube, Facebook, or your platform of choice. So let's go through each of those three points. Point number one, you should know how much you are making. You should know how much you are spending. You should know if you are profitable. Quick show of hands, how many of you actually know how much you're estimated to make this year? Raise your hands. That's really bad. Because how as a creator can you think about your creative decisions if you don't even know your ability to survive? I'm not saying, oh, you should definitely be profitable. I'm just saying you should know. Let's look at a couple examples. You've probably heard of Mr. Beast. In the early days, he had no money. He got his initial influx of funds, his brand deals, by doing crazy videos that didn't require capital, like sawing a plastic table in half using plastic knives, or counting to 100,000, or watching Logan Paul's music videos, Jake Paul's music videos 50 million times. And when he did start to get brand deal money, he took every dollar of what he'd make and he put it into the next one. That's like the hyper growth startup version of Ian Gray. He's like, I made 100,000 from this brand deal, we're gonna put 95,000 of it into the next video because then I can get it bigger and get an even larger sponsor to continue the pattern. 
Now, I'm not saying you should do that. I'm not advocating when you make a dollar, 95% of it should go to your next video. That is bloody crazy. The point is, if you don't even know what you're making, that's gonna be really, really hard for you to plan out your next videos. At Carrot, we work with a lot of different creators, and we see the top creators, they're making 90% margin. That means when you make $100, $90 of that is profit. But on average, we're seeing more like 30 to 40%. And what that means, if you're a creator, figure out how much you're actually making, figure out how much you're spending. Because if your margins are really, really high, yeah, that means you can potentially try something new. Like for example, hiring an editor so you don't have to do all that work yourself, or trying out a different channel, or going for that first drop. And if you're way below that 30%, gosh darn, you got to be very thoughtful about what you do next, and maybe it's time to start a React channel, or pick up a few more brand deals. Another one of my favorite creators I work with is an individual by the name of Tejas Falor. And Tejas has over 600,000 followers on TikTok. Pretty darn good living. He actually, in the beginning of this year, decided to stop making TikTok videos altogether because his passion was in long form and doing YouTube videos. So for three, four months, he wasn't making anything. No money was coming in and no money was coming out. But he was able to do that because he knew how much he had savings and he knew his burn rate. And guess what? He started putting out videos. Three, four, five of them didn't work. One of them, uh, David Dobrik, finally hit the algorithm, got over 300,000 followers, and now he's actually going to be able to make money from his YouTube. So number one, yeah, you should care about your budgeting. Try and aim for 30 to 50% margin because being in control of your finances helps you make better creative decisions. Second thing let's talk about. It's inevitable, right? The two things you always run into life, as they say, is death and taxes. That's how, you know, the government got out the phone. They couldn't actually prove you did any illegal activities, but they said, well, you didn't pay any taxes on your illegal activities, and that's how they took them down. There's only a few things you need to know about taxes. Number one, you definitely should pay them. I know many creators who haven't because you know, you're busy, you're putting out your next video, a year passes, two years pass, you haven't done it. Eventually, the government starts to assess fees and penalties. Then they start to freeze your funds, your bank accounts, you can't even access your own money, and then garnish your wages. It's a really bad place to be, and the longer you wait, the worse it gets. And not only, here's a fun little tip, not only do you need to pay your taxes, you need to pay them three, four times a year. See, the way it works, when April rolls around and you file your taxes, that's you telling the government, hey, here's how much I owe you. But the government expects that you've already been paying throughout the year that amount already. Because they don't want to wait until it gets to April. You tell them, oh yeah, I owe like $100,000, but uh, I don't have $100,000, it's a tough luck. When you're working for a company, Every single paycheck you get, they withhold a portion for payroll taxes. That's how the government's confident, hey, when April rolls around, I'm actually gonna be making however much from you because you've already paid it to me. If you are an independent content creator, there's no one withholding money from your paychecks for you. Three, four times a year, every quarter, you have to sit down and calculate, I think my taxes are gonna be this much. So I'm gonna split into four and pay you that portion now. And that sounds really hard, you know, time, there's a rule from the IRS that says, if you just pay generally around 100% of what your tax bill was last year, even if your tax bill is way higher this year, it's gonna be okay, they're not gonna go after you. Putting aside, hey, you should pay your taxes, keep in mind, as a creator, there are so many ways you can save money on tax. Gosh, if I bought a unicorn onesie and I was wearing this on stage right now, I could write that off as a business expense because it's a prop for a video. If I am working out of my apartment and say 25% of the space I use to film my videos, you can write off 25% of your rent. If you are a content creator, there's a little deduction you can look up called QBI that is equivalent to letting you write off 20% of your income under certain stipulations that most creators I know aren't even aware they can save this. And write-offs when you track them on a business card, whether it's your rent, meals, props, it all adds up. 
because it's just money you could otherwise be saving and using in your videos. I'm particularly, again, going to just call it QBI because I want all of you to go and Google it. It's literally right out 20% of what you made, and most creators potentially be saving tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands, if not more. They miss out if you didn't know about it. Finally, the last thing I'll say for taxes is you should incorporate. Now, when you incorporate, the primary reason isn't necessarily for taxes. It's actually to protect yourself from getting fucked because you allow legally you separated out your work as a business from yourself as a person. So they can't go after your personal assets you have an incorporate entity. Now many folks don't know, when you're incorporated as an LLC, there's an additional step where you say, I would now to be taxed as an escort. All that means is a special type of tax treatment that says, hey, there's this whole slew of taxes called self-employment tax. You only have to pay that on your salary. And guess what? If you're a creator and you're an escort, most of the business profit that you make you can distribute to yourself, but it doesn't have to count as your salary. So you save tons of money because you're only paying payroll taxes on your salary and you're not paying them on the rest of your business profit that you can still distribute to yourself. The last thing I want to talk about, and this is not in the slides, but you know, I decided to mix it up a little, is about credit. Credit is important. Eric is an extremely popular creator today with over 10 million followers. The way he got started was he made a whole series of content of buying Logan Paul's couches. Those couches, he got a loan from the Small Business Administration for $70,500. He went to the government and said, I'd like you to let me 17.5K so I can go buy Logan Paul's couches. Trust me, this is gonna work. It only did, because one, Eric's a genius, but two, he actually had credit. Before becoming a YouTuber, Eric used to run a marketing agency. And credit and your credit score is one of those things. It's only good if you've already been taking out credit and paying it back. If you haven't, it doesn't matter if you make millions of dollars. One of our clients is a creator named Ludwig. He is a top streamer, literally does make millions of dollars. And when we worked with him, his credit card limit was like $10,000 or less. Because no bank understood what he did and he hadn't gone and built his credit history. It's important to build it because as a business, as a person, you want access to working capital, to float, to a little bit of buffer. And because I'm assuming one day you probably would be interested in a car or an apartment or a house. And for every one of those things, yes, they actually do look at your credit history. There's like 50 gazillion more things you can know about your finances. But the point here isn't to drop a telephone book of information in front of you. Again, each one of you should be caring more about the creative work that you do. And if you have an extra hour a week, use that to ideate. Don't use that to look at your taxes. But again, the high level things you should know, please know how much you're making. Please do your taxes and think about getting write-offs. And please start to think about establishing credit. If any of you have questions, my name is Eric Way. I've nicely put my information here in the bottom right corner of these slides. My company actually does exactly that. We work with a lot of top creators like Graham Stephan, Alex Botez, Sam Porter, and Ludwig, and many others doing precisely that. Everybody, thank you so much for your time and hope you enjoy the rest of today. Thank you. This guy and I have known each other for 13 years. He was my college freshman.